Hello everyone! Welcome to the Financial Period Closed Workspace Demo brought to you by Avantico. My name is Garrett and I'm going to be your guide on this presentation. Um, so, Financial Period Closed Workspace is an incredibly useful tool that's going to help anyone looking to reduce the length of their financial close, identify any bottlenecks, and it's, it's going to help you spend more time analyzing to make business decisions faster by just providing greater visibility into what exactly is happening in your financial close process. Um, and it's, 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 it go, that visibility extends through all the different pieces that go into your financial close process and across all companies that might be involved at any one period. So we're going to start off by just looking a little bit at the functionality here. Um, we're going to first start... Uh, on one of the three main sections. So you'll see here I have my summary section, my tasks and status section, and my links section. First section is going to be the summary section. Um, it shows different kinds of tiles that upon clicking will bring up different lists of tasks based on what the tile was um, showing. So for example, this was I clicked on the past due tasks tile and it brought me to a list of all of my past due closing tasks that I have set up in the system right now. Um, and of course, you can see it shows counts of all the different types of tasks. Uh, moving on to the tasks and status section, uh, I have, I'm going to be clicking on one of the buttons here. So you see I have the task list button selected, and it shows me a complete task list of all everything that I have going on uh, in my financial close across all companies. Um, you can also organize your task list here by company. And you can click on the individual companies to give you the tasks remaining by company. You can click on uh, status by area, which will give you all the tasks remaining by area. And then you can also click on status by person to check on all the financial uh, closing stat, uh, excuse me, all the financial closing uh, tasks remaining by person. Um, so within the task list, let's take a look at all the different columns that we can look at. Um, starting off, on the left here, um, you have the task column right here, which of course gives you the task that's going on in your financial close. Um, you have the task area, which is just going to be the area that relates to whatever your task is. So if it's something like here, where it's saying post pending vendor invoices, you would put that under accounts payable. Of course, you got the company column. Um, of course, you have who's responsible. You have the due date. Um, of course, these are in red because that be when, the, when the due date is in red, that means that specific task is past due. Um, you have the data completion, which will be populated once you go over here to the very far left. And if you highlight a specific task and you click it as complete, that task will disappear. And so to bring it back, you would click on the show completed tasks and all your completed tasks will show up. And if you scroll on over, you'll see the completed dates here. Um, next is uh, two attachment columns. One is for template attachments, one is just for any other attachment. So just if you need to attach like a really important email to somebody's task, because it, it, it'll just help them. Um, moving back all the way to the left, I skipped over these two columns um, because they worked, they've worked better to explain them with other ones to the right. So like I said, here is the completed column. Whenever you want to mark a task as completed, you highlight that task by clicking on it, hitting that complete, that check mark, uh, and hit, excuse me, hitting the box, creating a check mark in the box, and that task will be selected as completed. Now, over here on, this, on the very far left, you have a status column, which will either show a nothing, uh, an exclamation mark, or a lock. If it shows an exclamation mark, um, you'll notice that it'll do this and make the date, due date red. So if you ever see this, this just is it's just another indication that that specific task is past due. Uh, if you see the lock, that's letting you know that this specific task cannot be marked as completed until a one or more other tasks are finished. So if I try to mark this as complete, so it has a lock. If I try to mark this as complete, is going to let me know that this task is dependent on another task that is not yet complete. And I got to complete all the other dependent tasks first. Um, so that gives you the, so that is the tasks and status section. And of course, the whole list here. Uh, and then moving on to the last section for links, 
you'll see all the different links that will take you to different parts of the configuration for the financial period close. And then there's just one link here that just gives you another way to look at all your tasks. So that's a quick run through of the functionality of the financial period close workspace. Let's jump on over to the, the how we configure it to look like this. How do we get these tiles to populate? How do we get our task list to populate? How do we even put tasks in to our workspace? Let's jump right into that. So starting off, uh, I have six tabs in the financial period close configuration. Um, each of these is going to be extremely important in setting up our workspace. So starting off with the closing roles tab, I have all my different closing roles that have a hand in the financial period close uh, workspace, or just in the financial period close overall. And this is just going to be dependent on how your organization is set up uh, for how you set this up. And it's important to note, uh, maybe you've heard of security roles, and it's important to note that uh, there's a big difference between closing roles and security roles. Uh, security roles are just going to affect what uh, individual users or, or groups of users are going to be able to access throughout the system versus closing roles, which is just going to be specific to the closing process. So the closing process workspace, what they see there. Uh, so that's very important to note. Um, if I want to create a new closing role in here, it's as easy as hitting new. And you just fill in the description for, the for this individual closing role. So let's say I want to add an inventory account. So just type that in and then oops and then I might just put the same thing in the description and then call it a day so uh, once you create a closing role you're going to need to create new resources so we're gonna move on to the resources tab and this is where you're going to define what employees are involved in the closing process so not only that you're going to add what their closing roles are in the financial goals process. And you're going to, on top of that, you're going to define what companies does that specific role for that employee have? What are they responsible for? Uh, what closing role are they, is that individual employee responsible for? And in what companies are they responsible to handle, to, to handle that role in? And you can also assign multiple roles to each individual employee. Um, the last thing to point out is going to be here, the view. So if you click this drop down here, you'll see two different selections, all tasks and status or only assigned tasks. This is going to be based on whether the specific employee is in a managerial role or in a non-managerial role. As if you have the all tasks and status selected, what that's going to do is essentially uh, gives you a view of all tasks and all statuses you can even come up here and make edits to your task list uh, in, in this individual financial period close. Uh, it essentially gives you full control of what's going on in the financial period close and gives you full control of making edits or um, anything else in it. Versus if you change your view to only assigned tasks, then when you come back here to the financial period close workspace, it's only going to show you the tasks that are assigned to you as an individual uh, employee. Jumping back, uh, we have task areas. Again, this is going to be dependent on how your organization runs things. So in this case, you'll notice if I go back to the financial close workspace and we head over here, it, it gives you just another option to on how you want to organize things. And it'll be a nice option on organizing things within um, when, when we get to the template part, uh, the template tab, you'll be able to organize each of your task by task area there. Um, but if we go back to the workspace, you'll notice that it just gives you an extra way of reporting. So if you had a bunch of tasks related to accounts payable, you can create an accounts payable task area. And it, 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 you can just put that to the accounts payable task area. And it, it'll be organized if you click on status by area here in the, under tasks and statuses and you click on accounts payable, your tasks should appear there. Jumping back, there is calendars for task scheduling. We'll talk more about this in a little bit, but essentially um, it's it, what it wants you to do is define how, what is, what is the work schedule for your employees when it's financial close time? So do they just still work on, do they work on a five day normal working week? 
or maybe you say, hey, uh, I want all of our employees to work on Saturdays during our financial period close cycle. So you, if that's the case, you would create a new calendar. You would maybe type in six day and call it six day work week. And then you would give it a start date of when you want that calendar to be effective. And, and keep a note, this is, um, you're just saying when you want that when you want that calendar to be usable, and then when you want that calendar to not be usable. As we're going to assign this calendar for task scheduling when we create a closing period, but we're not there yet. So for now, I'm just going to say it's for years, all of 2018. We're going to check off Saturday, hit create, and then boom, we have a task scheduling calendar. And if you want to go in and make changes to it for holidays, you can highlight it, click edit. And then you can come in here and search for individual days. And over here where it says working day, you can switch the yes to no. And this is also going to be important for when we get to due dates, when we, when we talk about due dates. So template is where you're going to have all of your uh, closing tasks listed out. And... Uh, this is the bread and butter of the financial close workspaces. This is where you set up what appears in the workspace. And based on how you define things in the other tabs, this um, you can make things show up related to what you defined in the other tabs. So I'm going to click on a template for month end here. And you'll see I've got um, my column for task areas. I've got my column for all of my individual tasks that I wanted to create for the financial period close. I have the this column here called due date relative to period and date. What this means is that it's gonna look, so when we get to the closing schedule tab, we're gonna be able to define um, the, the last dates, the beginning and the end of our closing period. And what this column is going to do is it's gonna look at the it's going to look at the last date for the closing period, and it's going to create a due date based on the end of the closing period, um, plus or minus uh, whatever number of X number of days that are in each of these boxes for each task. So if you have zero days uh, inputted in here, uh, it's going to create a due date uh, exactly on the last day of the financial period close. Uh, important to note as well, this is because this is where your calendar for task scheduling comes in handy, uh, which we'll assign that in the closing schedule uh, tab when we get there. But depending on your calendar for task scheduling as well, um, if you have it to where, let's say that the last day of your financial period close is on a Sunday. And let's assume we're using that calendar with the six day week where uh, we just added Saturday, but we didn't add Sunday. And let's say your due date falls on a Sunday. Um, what's going to happen if you, when you when we create uh, our closing period and we assign that calendar, if the due date would fall on a Sunday, it's going to move it to the next business day. Moving on, we have our due times. So you can select what time uh, on that day that you want that task to be due. Of course, you assign the closing role here. You assign what companies you want that closing role to take care of uh, during this uh, for this template, and then um, you'll want to always try to reconcile between what companies are being handled by this closing role uh, with what you assigned to each closing role in the resources tab. Uh, moving on to the task link, you'll want to. This is very nice as you can link to different areas uh, depending on what the task is. So if you have a task that is create journal entries, something as simple as that, you can create a task link that can link to creating journal entries in D365. It just makes the job easier for whoever has that task. Uh, once they click on their task, it'll take them to the area they need to be to complete it. Uh, dependencies, you can set up task dependencies by highlighting a specific task and then hitting the set dependency button. And then um, you'll get a list of all your different task areas. And if you click the little drop down here on any of them, you'll get a list of the tasks that are under that task area. And you can highlight what tasks are dependent uh, upon, well, excuse me, you'll get, uh, you'll be able to highlight what tasks need to be finished before 
this specific task that you highlighted is finished. And then lastly, we have the attachments column. The attachments column is just there to show you um, if anything's been attached. You'll see either a paperclip icon like this one has, or um, you can also attach certain URLs that can lead you to say a management uh, reporter report, or it could lead to an outside website that might be helpful in completing your task. So last, we have the closing schedule. The closing schedule is where you're gonna create, uh, define your period close. Um, if I hit, so I already have one created here. Uh, if I wanted to create a new one, I would just hit new and then I would have my closing schedule here. And I would type in, say, we'll, we'll just say October 2018. You know, it's not end of October yet, but we're, we are going to pretend. And then we're going to say October 2018 close. We're going to hit, excuse me, I'm going to say period start date is on first and it ends on the 31st and this is where you're going to choose what template you want to use for your month and for your excuse me for your financial period close um and then and it's it's what's going to decide what gets brought in to this workspace over here and what tasks show up so if we go to the calendar we would decide, this is pretty much the calendar for task scheduling. So we created that six day work week. So this is gonna let the closing, that specific closing period, it's gonna define the work week for it. And then of course we select what companies we want to be involved in this financial close process. Um, this is gonna populate based on what companies employees, you set employees up for in your template. So just because you, let's say you have employees that uh, everyone has a hand in every company, but you're only you only want to close for two of those companies. You can easily do that just by hitting those two. Maybe uh, employees in a separate company are going to handle the close, or these other companies have a different fiscal year end, and so they might close on a separate date. But for now, we're just going to select these two. You have an option of selecting as many companies as you like. Select, and we'll hit create, and then boom. We have our closing schedule here. So if I wanted to jump back to the financial period close workspace, and then I wanted to take a look at what my new closing period looks like, um, right here under the financial period close, uh, where it says financial period close, I can click on this drop down here and select what close I want to look at and finish up. So let's select that October 2018. Of course, it's going to show zero on these three blocks since there's no, nothing that needs to be passed due. And um, since the, uh, the due date is based, on the period end date, the excuse me, on the closing period end date, um, all those due dates are going to be towards that, are going to be around that, based on whatever my calendar for task scheduling, how I set that up, and based on what I put in for the due date, uh, the, the days relative to the due date. So that was a quick summary of the French period close workspace. I hope that was at least a little bit helpful. Uh, and helping you out uh, figure out how you can simplify your financial period close. Uh, feel free to contact us in our, at our website or contact me by email. Uh, all information is in the description below. Uh, thank you very much for staying tuned.